Well, as many of you who uh, watch and subscribe to me regularly know that I'm normally out and about surveying and showing you what I find. But uh, this year at the Southampton Boat Show, I've been host of the Fordex stage and ran um, my uh, survey tour uh, called the Surveyor's Notebook. And one or two people actually asked me, could I put some of the things I've shown on the stage on YouTube so I'm going to do my best what I would say is if you do have a chance please subscribe to my YouTube and share it because um, I'm always amazed at uh, where people watch me uh, all over the world and I'm really grateful for those of you who have watched me on a regular basis so here we go so these three seacocks are probably the story of why I absolutely detest DZR and in the beginning, when I first apprenticed, we had things like this, the Blake's Seacocks. And if you look through my YouTubes, you will find how to service these. These pair of Seacocks are over 50 years old, still usable, but I take them for my demonstrations um, uh, when I do talks at yacht clubs and stuff all over the UK. And, um, you know, I just wonder sometimes why we have have to suffer what I call the rubbish of DZR and brass uh, valves. And so these three really epitomise the reasons why quite often people get quite cross with me as a surveyor when I say you need to replace them all. So this first one, as you can see, um, has a lot of side corrosion on and it actually sheared off and the boat sank because the hose tail, which is basically the section that comes out here with the hose on, fractured off so there's the ball good as gold but can you see how thin the walls are of this fitting you know and it just it does my head in you know the valve itself was probably serviceable but the hose fitting failed when the owner wasn't on board then I've got this one which uh, came from an argument where basically I said to the guy this valve is at least 15 years old came out a, of a French production boat and I said I think you ought to change it as you can see it's made in Italy um, it all looks pretty okay and he was a little bit cross about, about it but it was dripping and it didn't look right through the gland anyway he went to uh, put a span on it to take it off and actually pulled it through the bottom of the boat uh, and here's the uh, external tail uh, skin fitting you can see it again Look how thin the walls of these fittings are. You know, I accept there are plenty of DZR brass fittings out there that are thicker, but how do you tell when you're surveying a boat and as an owner, when do you know this is going to be okay and when is it going to fail? You know, we, we have boats, you know, most people's boat is a pride and joy worth thousands of pounds and we're arguing about a 25, 30 pound piece of rubbish. The last one was actually quite an amusing one. The boatyard had an argument with me about taking this one out of the boat. Um, I've actually uh, put it together here so we can actually see see what it's like. But I could see the pinking, which, um, yes, there is red anti-foul in there, but you can actually see the pinking of the fitting where I've scraped the anti-foul off. It's not very probably very obvious, but you can see it just there, look. So the red anti-foul isn't helpful, I accept, because people think, oh, you know, it's, it's the anti-foul, not that. But as they unwound the valve off the top of this, it actually just sheared clean off. Now this one's actually quite thick. But you can see with the thread depths, again, the wall of the actual fitting is probably only two or three mil thick. If you get any corrosion or, or the actual deterioration of the fittings you can see on the inside here, where it's sheared off, then it becomes a bit more obvious these things are not strong enough. Now there are on YouTube some very good uh, demonstrations of demonstrating uh, the US 500 pound test, which clearly this one would have failed, uh, and likewise the leverage on. And again, it's really important when it comes through the hull that you cut these down so there's no more than the diameter of the uh, tube, uh, the skin fitting actually sticking out the top. So if you've got a, a one inch um, skin fitting, you really shouldn't have more than an inch sticking out uh, the top before you wind the valve down on top so basically something like that 
but even that has failed as you can see well i apologize for my rant i hope you find that useful i've done what i've done i promise to show uh why i hate these these are type seacocks uh incidentally some of these things like the pn number nothing to do with marine it's all to do with pressures uh for for the types of valves they were uh, so don't get conned by that one either when you start seeing some of the forums saying oh i use a pn50 or whatever because it's 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 nothing to do with the strength of it anyway again we'll just finish with that show you how thin that is and hope your hundred thousand pound boat or whatever is not uh sinking tonight cheers <laughs>